suggests we're nothing more than walking dirt with a little bit of spittle. If you look at the physical decomposition of the human body, you're inclined to go, yeah, that's right. But what happens to the person that is you? What happens to your personality? What happens to all those thoughts? If to speak in computer language, what happens to your hard drive? A lifetime of experiences you've loaded on that hard drive, what happens to it? The Greeks have an answer. What is that answer? You don't go up. You go down. Really? Does anyone go up? Nobody goes up. Everybody goes down. We do not want to confuse the Greek view of Hades with the Christian cosmological view of Dante's afterlife underworld or inferno. No, no, no. Two completely different paradigms. For the Greeks, everyone lives, everyone dies, everyone goes to a region in the underworld called Hades, everyone drinks from a special river there called the river Lethe. That drinking of that river removes the hard drive, but not totally. There's still a few marks left on the hard drive. That's why you have this thing called deja vu, they said. But most of your hard drive memories removed and then reincarnate. That's where our word comes from. You're reborn again, back into this existence where you live it all over again, and then you die, and then you do it all over again, over and over and over. This transmigratory view is the view of the Greeks. It is not a linear view of afterlife, it is a cyclical view. You live, you die, you live, you die, you come back again and again and again. As I answer this, jot down, what is your view on that? Do you agree or disagree with that notion of transmigration? Oh, you bet. Uh, Ms. Klingler, they're saying that you can visit with Mr. Dewar at your convenience. And that's the language they use, so, I mean, decide how you want to do that. So, without now spending too much time, let's make an observation about one more. Oh, go ahead. Observation. Oh, thank you very much. Without spending too much time, let's make a quick observation here about what we learned from the Greeks in the opening lines of the Iliad in regards to life after life. For the Greeks, you're going to live, you're going to die, and when you die, you go down into the underworld. But now I want to go back and look at these lines by Fagel, and I want to ask a simple question. Is dying for these people glorious or inglorious? Take a look at the opening lines again. Rage, goddess, sing the rage of Peleus' son Achilles, murderous, doomed, that, look at the verbs, cost the Achaeans countless losses. By the way, who are the Achaeans? We're going to find multiple names for a single group of people called the Greeks. Achaeans here is one of them. Countless losses. Look at the verb. Hurling down to the house of death. So many sturdy souls. Great fighters' souls. But made their bodies carry on feasts for the dogs and birds. Whoa. So we're going to have a national epic song that calls Achilles our hero, we're going to say that because of his tremendous rage, he's the one responsible for the deaths of all of his pals. But, but he's not responsible. maybe he's not responsible. It's okay. There's a greater force at work. There's a chessboard that's being played. And Achilles and all these guys that got jacked, they were just pieces on the board. They really didn't have much of a choice because you didn't choose to be born. Interesting. Now, make a note at 3A. We'll come back to this existential question in full when we take a look at Tom Stopard's classic play, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. But we can't get there until we've studied the play Hamlet. And we won't be there for quite some time. We'll begin, however, where we should begin in Western thought with the Iliad. A fight, a fight of words. Where is Bryce's in that fight? Do you find it significant that you read the entire first book of the Iliad and Bryce's nowhere to be found? Where is she? Sitting back in a tent, waiting to be raped. She doesn't know by who. Will it be Achilles? Will it be Agamemnon? And the entire Greek troop 
are all standing there and not one of them says, whoa, 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 fellas, you're about to slit each other's throats about who you're going to rape? Can we please ask about Bryce's and what she thinks about this project? Might have occurred to one or two of you, maybe she don't like either one of yous. Maybe she wants Ajax or none of yous because you're a bunch of smelly Greeks anyway. That topic doesn't even come up. Bryce's has no voice. Everyone expects, including our poet and readers of the poem, that's just the way things are. Whoa. Come back tomorrow. We'll debate that one some. Thank you.